Hello and welcome to Badass Moms brought to you by the Holistic Therapies Directory. I'm Nicole Cruz, super busy mommy coach. I'm really excited to be joined today by Dwayne and Tanisha, who are the founders of Virtually Fit and Hunger for Fitness. And what I love about them is they create online fitness and nutrition programs that work in real life for normal people with kids and interruptions and all. So Dwayne, Tanisha, welcome. Hey, how you hey. doing? I'm great. How are you guys? Good, good. Good. Excited to be doing this. Yes. I'm excited to have you on. <laughs> What's your day been like so far? Mine's been a little bit hectic. Um, I don't know. I mean, well, yeah, I was like up this morning early, like you're trying to do some laundry. Then I was working. Then I went to work out. Then I came back. Then I did groceries. <laughs> It's so a typical super busy mommy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, typically, yeah. typically that, that, that entrepreneurial life. Um, <laughs> treat the weekends like it's the weekdays. Um, right. So we get up early. And um, today I, we, uh, I personally um, got a few things done as far as business and then jumped in the garage and got a workout in. And then after that, um, I, had to, I had to go deal with car issues. But I'm back now. And um I'm ready to I'm ready to get into this um, wonderful podcast with you. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get into the meat of it for sure. Um, so I mean, yeah, let's fitness in real life with humans. Like you guys are busy. You're a busy couple. You have kids. Tell everyone about your kids. <laughs> well, we have an eight year old and an eleven year old. Uh, Pre quarantine, they were both. My son plays travel soccer. My daughter is a in a um, competitive gymnastics. So it was literally like both of them have practiced three days a week. Um, so it was like, you know, chicken with your head cut off, get home from school, do homework, go to practice, that, 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 that. Yep. <laughs> so now with quarantine, that's slowed down, obviously. So that's kind of like a good thing in a way for me because I'm like, okay, one less thing, you know. Um, but I think, you know, they, they pretty much keep themselves entertained. The homeschool thing was happening, which was uh, fun. My son is pretty self-sufficient. He does his thing. My daughter more so I have to kind of. Spider, you know, let's sit, let's do this. She's eight, so. Wait, was happening? What happened to it? Well, it's almost over now. So, like, this oh, okay. gets out here next week. Oh, so wow. Okay. Last yeah. week has been yeah. very, like, lax. They've just been, like, having fun online, so. Awesome. Yeah, we still have a few more weeks out here, so I can't wait for it to be over. It can, it's really good. They've worked so hard to put together a great program, and I appreciate it so much. It's just, it's too much you know? <laughs> right you're like man I see what you know you appreciate teachers so much more now like yeah. I do I'm like gosh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah totally no I, I actually used to be a teacher but it was high school so it's not even like I'm much better equipped than your average person to do <laughs> with kindergarten <laughs> you know it's like you, you know at a certain point I'm just like if you don't if you don't get this stuff I don't know what to tell you I don't know how else to <laughs> exactly. thankfully exactly. he's really good like he's so academic he's He's a little nerd, so he gets into it. He's actually not into, like, the art stuff that the, all, all the other kids like. <laughs> so wow. it's like, all right, let's try to do this art project. And he's like, two seconds, he's like, slaps a couple things. He's like, I'm done, Mom. I'm like, you know what? That's good enough for me. <laughs> yeah, so it's been an adventure for sure. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so you, you guys have to make fitness work in real life. And that's how you launched into this. And so and like, that's one of the things we kind of like bonded over. Yeah. You know, we all have our own busy lives. And we ended up getting, you know, starting a business to help other people figure it out because I think it's life changing once you figure it out, you know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think that helping people know that they can figure it out, that it's possible, you know what I'm saying? And I, you know, so that, I think that's what we bonded over too. that knowing once we did it, we're like, okay, you know, people need to know that they can do this. Like, you know, having kids, running a business is not an excuse to be unhealthy. Like you can, you can make it work. Yeah, absolutely. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have to know that the option's there because otherwise, if you look at most of what's out there, it does seem impossible. Like if you do your typical Google search or whatever, or you end up with programs that are geared towards busy people that get like mediocre results and are difficult to implement and then shame their clients if the program doesn't fit into their life as opposed to coming up with programs that fit people's lives. So it's... You know, it, it, like it is, I can understand why somebody who's not, you know, entrenched in this stuff like we are 
would come to the conclusion that they don't have the option. Yep. That's true. Mm -hmm. So how do you make it work? And what do you do for your clients? Um, so for me, what I like to do is I like to try to make fitness a priority for me personally. So, um, the, the best way to, for me to do that is literally make it the first thing I do in the, in the morning. Um, so, uh, even though I, you know, I've not always been the, the, the morning person, um, but I just realized that if you definitely want to, you definitely want to see results and so on and so forth, you got to put the time and effort into it. So, um, I started just making sure I block out that time first thing in the morning to work out. Um, and get it done and get it out the way. And because um, what I started realizing it's, was that I almost felt like like my motivation to work out was kind of like a, a battery in a, in a cell phone where, you know, like at night when you plug it in um, to charge, when you wake up in the morning, you know that, that it's fully charged, it's fully green. Um, it, it, but as the day goes on, that battery starts to drain, right? So if you, if, if you, ever, if you ever went a whole day without trying to charge your phone, eventually you're going to start getting 20% warning indicators in 10% and so on and so forth. So I started feeling by the time I got, I, I got out of work by the end of the day, my battery was literally at 20% or 10%. So I just didn't have no energy to say, okay, let me go, let me go, um, you know, do a kick-ass workout right now is more of us. It's okay. Let me just try to do something. And then you really don't get really the results from that. So once I made the switch and started doing everything first thing in the morning is like, okay, that's when things started to really like, um, blossom um, for me personally and then what you know what we did w was incorporated that into our fitness business um, where when we first when we first launched we were like one of the only boot camps like in person to actually do boot camps super early in the mornings because um, we try to actually we try to accommodate folks like that and just get them into that habit as well and then what we um, and what I try to do on my side is that I try to simplify as much as possible when it comes to just the day-to-day -day when it comes to nutrition and fitness um, not to heavily bloat anything that we do, um, and not to bloat anything that our clients do. So we always try to, we always try to always tell our clients that, okay, we have the cliff notes of, of, of fitness where it's ultimately, yeah, you can read the entire chapter or we can give you all the information that you need first and um, foremost. So you can cut out all the fluff. So that's one of the biggest things I think for the biggest uh, wins for us was ultimately we got to realize how to, how to make the right shortcuts. And then we just use that to implement um, into our programs for our clients or so our clients and ultimately see the value. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I, mean, I hate fluff. <laughs> um, I mean, I got to dig deeper into some of that. So, um, I mean, you have kids who are 8 and 11. They're probably a little bit self-sufficient. When they were younger, you try to do your workout first thing in the morning. Well, first of all, a lot of times you don't wake up to an alarm. You wake up to a crying baby um, or a bad dream or bedwetting. Um, and then... You know, so at what point were you like, how did you guys manage to carve out that time in the earlier years when the kids aren't as self-sufficient? So I can answer that. Yeah, that's going to be <laughs> more of a Tanisha question. So um, even now, um, Dwayne, you know, he works outside of the home full time as well. So he definitely has to get his workout done first thing in the morning. I'm here, so I'm able to cut mine into the day later if I need to. Uh, but even when they were younger, when my daughter was a baby, um, when I was getting back into working out after I had a sheet, I was still nursing her and I would wake up, um, I would, and I would work out, start to work out at like about five o'clock in the morning. I would just get up, I would, go, I would be right in my kitchen. So that's how I, that's how I did my transformation. Actually, when I had her, he designed me a program that I did right in my kitchen, was like 20 minutes a day, three days a week. But she would sometimes wake up in the middle of me working out. So I would stop what I was doing. I would go get her, nurse her, and she would put, put her back to sleep, go back, finish my workout real quick. Um, and that's literally what I did um, for, I would say, I, I did it for about 12 weeks until I you know, lost the weight that I wanted to lose from having her. Um, and I think at that point, what it is, is just understanding that working out is cumulative. Like if you have to stop in the middle of your workout for whatever, the whatever time that you can spend doing it, that's enough. Like, you know, that's, that's what you can spend right now. And that's enough. So even if I had to stop, even if she didn't go back to sleep, but I had to stop right then I had gotten in a good 10, 15 minutes already. You know what I'm saying? So, and it was a hit workout. So it was, that was going to be enough for the day. And then I was going to move on to the next day, you know? And at that point I was, I was working outside of the home too. So I would finish working out. I would go get ready while she was still sleeping, nurse her right before we left and head to work. So, <laughs> you know, and that's how we did it. Yeah, it's a lot. And I mean, I think a, a key part of that, like you said, whatever you can get in works, but also you were choosing 
a type of workout that gets great results in short bursts with rest in between. Whereas if you were doing like a typical muscular endurance workout where it was like body weight squats, body weight lunges, and you know, with those you don't get the same, you know, like muscular endurance workouts or cardio workouts, you know, typical steady state cardio, you don't get the same results if you stop in between. So, I mean, I think it's, you know, what you said is like exactly like you chose the right workouts for your circumstances. And then you knew if you had to stop, you had to stop and you could sprinkle it throughout your day. Or if you had to stop, you had still achieved something in those few minutes, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. so, I think that's what we do for our clients too. Although we have, you know, our certain programs that we might say, these are our staples. And somebody like right now, for example, we have a client, she's her schedule at work has completely changed. She has no time to work out. She's telling us, you know, and, and you have to respect that. I'm not going to say, you you know what, you need to make the time, you know, figure it out. We literally said, okay, we will design you a program. What can you fit in? How much time can you fit in a day? Is it 10 minutes of walking? Can you walk on your lunch break? So we're going to design this program so that she can get in the exercise she needs in between the nooks and crannies of her day. And I think that's important, you know? Yeah, no, that's awesome. I mean, like, that's, a, that's exactly what my program relies on. <laughs> you know, like, um, I'm working with single moms, moms in like hardship crisis situations. And so a lot of times, like, they're not wasting time. They literally spend every waking moment getting up, taking care of their kids, taking care of elders or sick relatives or whatever the case may be, and then going to sleep for like three to four hours. That's probably broken because someone's gonna wake them up, you know? And it's like, so you don't have time. What do you have to do? It has to overlap you know like how, when can you accomplish two things at once you know like if you're cooking the kitchen floor workout you know uh, kitchen floors are fun you can slide on them you can do creative stuff that you can't necessarily do in other settings you know so it's like whatever it is like it, can you do two things at once well you're helping the kids with their homework or spending quality time with them like there are times my son just I want to do like active games he wants to play with trains I'll be there like in a plank you know going through different variations of the plank while he's there with his trains and playing together, interacting, you know, and it's like, at first I feel like it's forced, but then it becomes a lifestyle and you do it without thinking. Like you'll, you'll be on a client call and you'll be like stretching because you just feel like you need to. Like some people need to crack their knuckles. Like I need to stretch. What can I say? <laughs> you know, what's funny is I used to work with a girl and, um, and this is like pre, I think probably pre even the, or maybe not, maybe we had the studio, I don't remember, but she used to literally, every time she would get up from her desk, she would lunge around the office. And she was like, <laughs> she was like, don't, like, she was like, don't, don't look at me, don't say, it. don't look at me funny, because I'm working on my booty. <laughs> <And> <laughs> but I thought it was so funny, but you know what I mean? Hey, I was like, whatever you need whatever to do works. to make it work. Yeah. You know? Exactly, whatever you need to do, like, however you can fit it in, like, you know, a lot of times with Eric now, we're in the habit, I can't, go anywhere without running anytime mm -hmm. we go you know like we're in new york city so it's you know like we don't have a car we take you know we walk we take public transportation but so anytime we go out like mommy i'll race you here i'll race you there i'll race you there and it's like okay so you know what i haven't been able to really go for a run much during quarantine um i had someone like staying with me a few days and i was so happy i was just like hold on just i'll be back <laughs> i like went out for my barefoot run and it was like 20 30 minutes for those few days and it was like heaven but you know normally that's not even the case right so it's like okay like i can't go for a run but i can run every day even yep. if it's just like sprinting if i do 10 sprints a day you know it adds up to something and then if you add that with all the other stuff so yep. yeah totally i mean like you said it's about um you know fitting it around someone's life but also having you guys having you know coaches who know how to do that because trying to figure it out on your own i mean i don't know if you have clients come to you and they're like oh i do whatever i can you know like i'll be cooking and i'll be doing squats and i'm like with how much weight with no weight okay how many squats do you do? i don't know like 10 20 <laughs> okay that's totally better than nothing i give you so much credit for doing that but have you ever held your kid on your hip and then bent down and picked something up oh yeah all the time well you just did a squat with like 30 pounds so <laughs> you're not going to get results from doing 10 body weight squats while you cook, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like, that's why you, what you guys are doing, you know, is so important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like when your kids see you doing that too, it kind of creates a, um, 
just something in them, like, too. Like, they want to do it with you. Like, I remember even when my daughter was probably three, and I was in my garage working out, and I used, that's where I used to work out, you know, when she played. But she would come out there with me. One day, I'm inside now at this point. I go, I go out into the garage, and she's in there with my DVD on. I was doing a workout DVD at the time with these little, like, fake weights. And she was, I had the picture popped up on my phone the other day. And she was like doing like, um, l- uh, not lunch, she was doing deadlifts. And I was like, <laughs> it was the funniest thing to me, but I, it wasn't to come do this with me. She just would see me doing it all the time. So she went out there and started doing it. So I always say, you know, they, they live and they live what they learn. You know, they see you doing this is important to you. And then it becomes something that they, you know, couldn't see as normal, you know? I agree but. completely. And I mean, the change happens pretty quickly too, you know, like, I mean, I, like, I agree, those pictures of them, you know, like, I have some of him, it's the same thing. And then my favorite ones to get from my clients are the same types of things. Like, they'll send me the videos of them doing their workout, and there's their kid next to them jumping in on it, you know? Um, some of them, like, I'll send them the, the kitty adjustable dumbbells. Eric used to, you know, like I said, I'm in an, I'm in an apartment, you know, like, New York City. So, um, workout space, a little more limited. So, I have adjustable dumbbells and I got him a kitty set and he would literally make me their foam. Like there's no difference, but I would have to adjust his dumbbells when I adjusted mine. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it becomes a bonding experience, you know, like um, when you can switch it so that the quote unquote obstacle that's holding you back as wonderful as that the obstacle. I mean, they're, we cherish our children. Like I'm not, they're not just an obstacle, but what's holding you back when you can make them like your ally when they push you to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. So you guys have the fitness part that you do with your clients. You have like your core program, you customize things as needed. And then I love your nutrition approach because we don't like, don't get like, like if you can count and measure everything, that's amazing. By all means do it. But if you're listening to this podcast, that's probably not you. <laughs> and so when you have all these meal plans and programs where they, they send you something and they're like, here's what you're eating tomorrow. And you're like, I don't have any of this stuff and I can't get to the store. My day to go food shopping is Thursday. That's the only time I can because that's when my mom comes and watches the kids. And so like, there you go. Then you fell behind and you like beat yourself up, right? So like what you guys have actually makes sense and works and it's flexible and it's genius. So <laughs> talk about it. Um, so, uh, so when, uh, so when a, some, a client joins with us, we take them on a, a journey and it's a, it's a three phase journey. So what ends up happening on that first phase, well, we put them on something we call like our seven day fat detox, where it's like, actually, actually what we're going to give you is a seven day meal plan that you're going to follow where it's going to break you down into, you know, the breakfast, lunches and dinners and into, um, possibly two small snacks. And what we're trying to do on that phase is ultimately we're just trying to get you into the routine of not skipping any meals. Um, a lot of the clients that come to us uh, honestly skip meals because in some cases they think that's the way to, to actually lose weight by, eat, by, by eating less. Um, and some, some folks say they don't have enough time to make breakfast and so on and so forth. So what we end up doing, we, sh- we show them how you can um, create a healthy option really quick, fast that would ultimately still help you as far as losing the weight or losing the inches. Um, and just get you into that habit of, of, of eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So what ends up happening is when you jo- join a program with us, um, being that our program is virtual, is for the first seven days, what you're going to end up doing is you're, you're going to actually end, end up messaging Tanisha in the app, um, sending them a picture of the breakfast, the lunch, and the dinner. And um, it's not a situation where we're, you know, we're doing that because we're nosy. We're doing that because ultimately we want to make sure that you're starting to follow the, the plan. And the plan is very simple. You know, I joke around that um, about last year, my, my, my 11-year-old son at the time followed the, the actual um, uh, meal plan. He actually, he actually lost weight. The picture is actually on our Instagram. Um, so I was joking around. It's so easy. 11-year-old can actually follow it. And we've had, we've had people follow who didn't even speak English. So it's that simple. So what ends up happening is you just follow that. There's no, there's no calorie counting. There's, no, there's nothing like that. And I think that, you know, that's one of the benefits when you, um, you join with us. It's really just realistic. It's nothing crazy. It's not a science project um, where sometimes, you know, you know um, yeah, I think for us, we, we, we kind of recognize the niche that we're trying to serve. Um, but we're not trying to serve the 5% um, crowd who's already at 8% body fat, who's counting every macro and so on and so forth. We're looking for the other 95, right, that ultimately are struggling. You know, they're just coming off the couch. They had a long day at work. They're juggling the kids, like, just like you were saying before. Um, and they're just trying to figure out a way to get into a routine to start seeing small wins. 
So that those first seven days is realistically just small wins. Um, we've tried the whole, you know, textbook, have them come in, get your, get, get your food scale, uh, measure out everything. And it's just too much work. And they end up quitting before they even get started. So once we figured out the, the, the recipe, um, so to speak, pardon the pun, to have them lose weight and keep it simple. We just stuck with that. We've been doing that for, for a while. So that's really our, realistically our phase one. Then we have a phase two where at first we were just trying to get you to eat, um, you know, three or four square meals a day. Now we're going to, now we're going to transition into ultimately having you making sure you know to eat the right portion sizes. And when we say that eat the right portion sizes, we're still not measuring. Um, we actually, we're, we're actually mail out um, these magical trays. We like to say where ultimately our clients will be able to, have these trays and it's broken into three compartments where they know how much protein, carbs, and veggies they should be having. Because um, one of the things that we're known for is that we, don't, we, we, do not, we do not restrict any one food group. So you're still gonna be in your carbs, still gonna be in your protein, still gonna be in your veggies. We're not the typical, uh, oh, no bread, no sugar, no alcohol type of, um, that we're, we're just extremely um, realistic for real people. So what ends up happening is for, um, and it all depends too, how long uh, a client stays on that. We take, we take that usually one step at a time because it all depends. Some clients want to lose 10 pounds, some want to lose 30, 60, whatever that number might be. So what we'll do is we'll follow, we'll follow up with you. We have these things called feedback sessions that we do weekly with our clients where we get to jump on a call, 10 minutes, and then what we do is we review their week. And then after, we've, after you got that plan down solid, um, then we, we, we bring you to something we call the metabolic makeover. So that's our phase three. And phase three, by the time we're on phase three, clients have already know the concept of splitting up their plates between breakfast, I mean, not breakfast, but a protein, a carb, and a veggie. It's already, it's, it's already ingrained in them. Um, even when they go to a restaurant um, to go order, if they go to Fridays or anything, they ultimately know when they look at the menu, where's my veggie coming from? Where's my carbs coming from? Where's my protein coming from? So if you look at any of our clients' plate, it's not like triple carbs and, 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 and a protein or anything like that. It's more of, okay, a protein, a carb, and veggie, even if at a restaurant. We even had clients that literally take the trays to restaurants, <laughs> literally have, the, have, have them fill up the trays based on those food groups. Um, so during the, the, uh, the third phase is where we actually start to um, talk a little bit more about um, calories and how to properly get yourself in a, in a calorie deficit. Because we, we actually uh, champion our program based off the calorie deficit. So getting the proper one. So once we figure out that proper um, number, that magical number is where we'll start, we'll start getting our clients to zone in on that number. And then um, based on how much activity they're going to be going throughout the day, like as far as um, exercise and so on and so forth, we get that number. Then we will we'll tell them exactly how much protein, how much carbs, how much veggies they should be having from a percentage standpoint. Um, and the reason why we do this program is so it's so vital for a lot, a lot of our clients is that um, a lot of times what ends up happening is after you start losing the weight, um, you, you, you know this as well, anybody, you might hit a plateau. And a lot of times when you hit the plateau is because you're still doing the same exact meal plan that you were doing when you first started. And you have to always remember that you might have started off at 225 pounds, but when you're at 180, you're going to have to eat a little bit different than you were at 225. So with us constantly doing the, the feedback set, constantly verifying, okay, what's that proper calorie deficit you should be in to continue the weight loss? We like to, we like to say that, you know, the days of plateaus are, are, are over because we're constantly, we're constantly figuring out troubleshooting to see where you ultimately ultimately need to get now we don't have like a magic wand um week after week we verify we say okay we, we jump on the scale every money our clients know they take a they take a progress picture and they um and they and they weigh in in our app and then what ends up happening is our app is integrated with my fitness file so we know exactly how many calories you, you're eating how much percentage um of protein you're having and then we talk through it and then we see okay where, where are we at and then from there we track it if we need to make adjustments we do and we coach them through that process but that's really the third phase. Um, so it's, it, it is very typically um, a client doesn't really get that to that phase until at least um, 90 days. So we about three months in, we'll, 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 we'll get into that uh, mainly. But once again, it's more of a situation where Tanisha normally um, out to them. It's, she's talking to them and talking through that process and see if they're, they have graduated, so to speak, to that phase. And some clients prefer to stay in phase two yep. where, you know, they love the trays, they like the simplicity of it. And they're like, I'm, you know, they yep. lose their weight there and they're like, I'm good here. I want to say, you know, thanks yep. for these trays and this, this, you know, suggestion, I'm going to go with it. Yeah. So we have a girl right now, I think she lost about 17 pounds and she was, you know, that was it for her. That's what she wanted. Loves the trays, still uses them, still incorporates them into her like day-to-day -day life. And, um, and that's it. Yeah. So. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, no, that's awesome. And what I, love about that is that as you take them on this journey they develop the mind body awareness to be able to read their body's own signals so as they come to you with stuff and you adjust 
I'm guessing eventually they get to the point where they learn how to kind of make some of those tweaks and adjustments on their own, which is clutch, you know? <laughs> it, it, for us, we, we like to say it's an educational process. Mm -hmm. We're educating you how to properly eat. Um, the goal is not for you to eat up a meal plan for the rest of your life. The goal is for you to ultimately be able to, to know, okay, what, what are the proper things to have when you're in, in, in situations? You could be at a barbecue, a wedding, whatever the case right. may be. If you're feeling like, you know, let me stick to my, let me stick to my normal day routine, you know how to break that down. I mean, we've had clients that have gone through our program and um, we'll post them on our Instagram and so on and so forth. And folks will actually reach out to them to ask them questions. And, and they're coaching um, new <laughs> prospects on, oh, this is how it works. This is how mm -hmm. I do it. This, and these are snacks that, you know, that I have and, and, and so on and so forth. So it's, and it's, to, 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 we're honored because it's, it's to coach someone and to see somebody able to coach somebody else based off of what you've been teaching them. It's, it's, yes, it's, yeah. yeah, it's the reason why you do this in the first place, you know, it's just to get that, that, that feeling is, is unbelievable. So, um, so yeah, so that's what happens when you're, when you train with us, it's, it's an educational experience. It, we're trying to teach you how to properly eat. It's not about, okay, uh, meal plan, meal plan, meal plan after week after week. And, um, we're trying to also get you in a routine of, um, being able to even prepare your own meals. We do have option for folks like me who don't know how to cook. Um, and we can get into that as well. But, um, but yeah, so for the most part, we're trying to, we're trying to educate our clients on how to um, even properly prepare their meals. So, um, so it all just, just makes sense and they're, they're more self, um, self um, reliant. Yeah. I mean, I think that's so important. I mean, like the point, you know, should be to educate clients to be able to do this, not to make them dependent on us. Right. Like, like if you're in it for the right reasons, you want that end goal, you know, you don't want to hook them in and, I mean, it's, it's sad that some of those even exist, but no, I mean, I love that. That's great. So, okay. So the nerd in me just has to ask now. So you have the tray, protein, veggies, carbs. Um, how do you treat things like beans, which some people consider a protein, but are actually like two thirds starch or nuts, which are like two thirds fat. And some, some of them have some proteins and, you know, like, or stew, which is like, everything's all mixed together in one. <laughs> so it's a nerdy question, but I'm curious. <laughs> so with beans are considered a carb, more so than a protein for sure. Okay. You have the beans, you need, a, that's your carb section. Um, we do tell them like, so the way the meal plan is set up, like say they want rice and beans. And we're like, as long as they both, they're both carbs, if, they, if you can fit them in this section together then have them together you know so like if you want to split it up half rice you know what i mean but in that one yeah. that's your portion for that amount for those things um as far as things like nuts we consider those fats so there's no tray for fats in the there's no spot for fats in the tray but i usually tell them measure it with the size of your thumb so if you want to include a fat in the meal it's like about the size of your thumb about an ounce of like an avocado something like that so i give them guidelines where they don't necessarily have to get a scale and weigh it um, but they can go that way. If it's nuts, I tell them, you know, the palm of your hands, you know, no more than like, I just had a lady recently, she put, sent me a picture of her, her tray. This was like she, yesterday. Yeah, literally. And she had um, a bunch of almonds in the, one of the carb sections in the carb section. And I, so I messaged her and I said, you know, I just want to let you know, if you're going to eat almonds, that's fine. I said, but you want to make sure you're actually counting those out or put using the palm of your hand. I said, because it's very easy to overconsume that. And so she's like, oh, okay, I got it. No, you know, I understand, you know, and so, you know, but so that's usually what we do with things like, you know, um, fats or beans. As far as like a stew is a little harder. Um, <laughs> that's not on the meal plan. That's a good question. So that though. is a good yeah, question. We never yeah. had that. I eat stews all the time. That's like my go-to. <laughs> I'm like, okay, here are the ingredients I have. Here's one pot. I don't like doing dishes. And I'm going to throw that in a pot and let it boil while I go do other stuff I have to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good that's question. A good one. Yeah, I, yeah, right? We haven't had, had anybody yeah, even ask, ask us that. that. No. So yeah. I would I'm probably. Not, be, I can't, I, well, you're not our. Know. You're not our <laughs> ideal. Okay? You're just. You you just been disqualified. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. So how do you, how do you classify um, potatoes, sweet potatoes, yucca, like those? Um, uh, I call them starchy veggies. Um, those um, yeah, starchier vegetables or root vegetables. Where do you? Where do the clients put those? Carbs. 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 Which is literally like your green veggies, like your, you know, it's green beans, spinach, broccoli, kale, you Carrots, know. Carrots, zucchini, mushrooms, blah, blah, blah. Got it. Okay, cool. Wow. Well, so, so our, our thing is actually, huh? I was going to say that we, we believe that the only bad carbs is the fried ones. 
right? So um, as long as it fits in the com com compartment, it, it's, it's good to go. We're, we're, we're a carb loving family. So, um, so yeah, if it's, if it's sweet potatoes or if it's white potatoes or whatever the case may be, we just want to make sure it fits in that, in that section, you're good and it's not fried. Um, because, um, that's where, that's where, that's where you're, um, hitting one of our, our, our six commandments that we like to call. That, <laughs> that, that, yeah, that we, that, that we, that, that we, we spell out in the seven day. So from the set on our seven day, uh, fat detox, they already know the, the, the commandments of, okay. These are things that I shouldn't be doing even after I leave this phase, unless it's splurging or it's some type of cheat day. Or yeah. cheat. <laughs> so let's get into splurging. I was going to ask about sauces and dressings and stuff and how you classify those because they're all different. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can yeah. tell what my diet's like. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I love pasta. I mean, whole grain, whole grain pasta, yeah. which not everyone tolerates. Um, I tolerate, whole, I can't tolerate whole grains well, but like, I'm definitely putting some like sauce on there, you grass fed meat sauce or whatever. So I'm like, is that, a, is that a vegetable? And then there's the other sauces. Like if you have a vodka sauce, well now you're getting into the fat category. Anyways, I'll let my nerdy stuff go. Let's talk about cheating. <laughs> oh, yeah. What do you want to know? Oh, so your rules for cheating. Okay. I know we differ slightly on this, but I think that's the point. That's why I love talking to you guys because we have clients with you know, we have slightly different focuses, very, like very much overlap, but slightly different focuses. And we have two approaches that overlap a lot, but are different. And it just goes to show there are multiple ways to make this work. Yeah. Some of it can come down to preference. You might just be like, I like Dwayne and Tanisha's program better than Super Busy Mommy program, like whatever, you know, like some of it comes down to, but there are multiple ways to make this work. And I love showing that variety. Like this isn't a one size fits all type of thing, you know? But so, tell, so how you how you deal with cheating? So ultimately, um, for us, we, we we definitely believe that you should have you should have uh, some type of cheat meal um, throughout the week, or I should say, at least one one day. Um, we also we also in, in some cases um, like to promote like small wins. So it might be a, a hundred calorie snack brownie treat or something of that something of that nature. But that's something that you're talking through with your coach, right? So Tanisha is helping you through that process. Um, but um, we even have like a we even have like this our, our ultimate snack list where we, we have like the top 100 snacks to actually have. Um, but when it comes to like that cheat meal, we try not to have folks go completely crazy because, you know, as well as anyone, that one cheat meal can erase everything throughout the, the entire day. It's, it's crazy how, you know, you know, in because uh, a lot of a lot of the clients that we get is, you know, they believe that they were eating good between Monday through Friday and then Saturday and Sunday it all went to all went to crap right so how it's crazy how those those 48 hours erases the entire five days that you have previously that to that so there's a situation where people will do that in one day so what we like to do is like say pick one meal and usually it's your favorite meal um we even we even ask folks when they when when, when they come on to the program give us your top three cheat meals like we want to know already like okay what you, what what is your go-to and then what we'll do is we'll have them ultimately that pick one of those when it's time to, um, and it could be pizza, it could be chicken wings, it could be anything, anything like that. And then they can reward themselves. Um, and that happens in the perfect portion system where they already get to select their, they already dictate what they normally like to eat as a, as a, as a cheat meal and they, and they can, they can devour it. But we do not believe in an entire cheat day. Um, it's, and one of the number one reasons why we don't believe that, because our program is not that you're working out seven days a week, right? Uh, we our, our program is really three days a week, 24 minutes a day, right? That's the, that's really, that's really the base. And this is it's the same base that, you know, our clients that have come in and lost five pounds and our clients that have come in and lost 70. So it's, it, we, you know, we're very, we're, we push nutrition at the, at the most, because as we know, you're going to get 80% of the results is in the nutrition. We get our clients to follow our meal plan and follow it correctly we'll see the results. And, and we've had clients who, who couldn't work out at all, um, who've gotten, who, who had issues where they had to take a pause on working out. They kept following the meal plan. Um, I know I know one cli client off the top of my head right now, she ended up losing like another 12 pounds and she, she couldn't work out. Um, had someone in the quarantine, the same situation, she couldn't work out. Um, she had thought possibly that she had, um, um, had gotten Corona. So the doctors had told her she needed to stop working out. And she just kept on the meal plan. And she kept losing weight. So it's just a testament of if you have the right nutrition, you'll be fine. But if you have the right nutrition, but you're just erasing it every, every 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 Saturday and Sunday because you know you're 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 going back to your old ways, it's just you're you're on a hamster wheel. 
and that's where you quit and you're going to ultimately say, you know, fitness doesn't work or, or doing the teacher program doesn't work or the coach program doesn't work. And it's not that it didn't work. It's ultimately that you're, you're erasing it um, by the end of the week. Um, by this, and it's just real self-control. So we try to get our clients to be able to understand that, understand the, 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 the I guess you can say the cons of over, over indulging. Um, and then that's pretty much it. But, and it's not a situation where we want them to, okay, yes, you get this meal. This is my meal where you get to eat whatever you want. Let's skimp on all my food all day because now I'm going to really go in full force with my cheat meal. It's a situation <laughs> where eat your normal meals. Yeah. You know, it's just this one, okay, maybe for lunch, you want to go out to lunch and you want to be able to just have a burger or whatever that you wouldn't normally eat on this plan. Mm -hmm. um, or you want to go to dinner and have a glass of wine. And I say, whatever you want, you don't want to think about your meal plan. Choose that meal and do it. Like just to give yourself kind of like, a break so you're not feeling like I'm stuck in this one plan. I can't deviate at all. And, you know, I can't ever go out to eat. I can't, even if they choose to go out to eat while, during the week, if it's not a cheat meal, like that's what we always say, you know, make, you can make healthy choices out of the restaurant. You know, you can get your lean protein, your veggies and your, you know, a healthy carb. So, so yeah, so we don't promote like a cheat day, but yeah, definitely a, a treat meal. I like to say yeah, or something treat. like that. I mean, we even have, we yeah. even have a fast food meal plan. So that we get to them as well, where it's basically um, food that meals you can have through a drive through. Wow. Um, with mm -hmm. clients where it's like the this, healthier yeah, choices that you can make if you have to do that. And you they know? get access to that. They get to see that. They have it on their phone. So you have to make a stop at, um, at McDonald's. You know what to grab. You have to go to Poyo. I don't know if Poyo. You probably have Poyo Travel yeah. Girl up there in New York. You ever go to Poyo? Yeah. <laughs> I don't okay. think so. Um, so, um, but it, it, it can be anything. We have, we have, you guys have, you guys have probably have stuff like, um, like Jersey Mike's, you ever heard that? See, that's a, you guys are a real, you guys are a real <laughs> capital. So, but these are like some of like the popular like fast food restaurants here. So what we did was we went and we 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 researched their menus and said, okay, let's figure out what they can eat. That they're already eating that because one of the things that we do is we're, we're big on data. So when the clients come in, we ask them like, okay, what do you like to eat at, and so on and so forth. So we take that and we're like, okay, now we can use that, right? We can we can help that and reverse 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 the engineer that and say, okay, well, they like going to this restaurant. Let's just tell them what they can eat when they go there, mm -hmm. right? So now when they go there with the family, because remember these people, a lot of people have, you know, they have a spouse and they have two kids, three kids, four kids. They still have to go to these restaurants. Mm -hmm. So we, have, we enable them and empower them to still be able to go eat with their family. But when you get there, you just eat this, 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 and this, and you're still fine. So, um, and they have access to that as well. So we try to, we try to reach, we honestly, because of these feedback sessions we have weekly, we get to learn like, okay, this, this is a pain point. This is a pain point. How do we solve it? Right? So then what we do is we quickly, we quickly um, gather some research, some data, whatever, whatever, and we'll figure it out. So the next time someone comes, comes on the board and they're like, well, you know, I had this problem. Like, we already have that for you right here. Right? So, um, and they love that. They love that. They love that about us. And that's one of the biggest things when you're working with a coach that truly like, or we're here, just, we're, we're problem solvers. Right. So, yeah. So we're trying to we're, we're ultimately at all times just trying to solve problems before they get to it. And because if we can't solve the problem, it's going to end up being an excuse. And that's we don't we don't want excuses. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. And I love that about you guys, because you look at people's lives and their situations and you give them, you know, the, the respect of taking their concerns seriously. And then you find innovative solutions and you have the depth of knowledge in what you do in order to be able to come up with those creative, innovative solutions. You're not tied to a textbook because you've memorized the solution someone else told you. You have that deeper understanding where you're able to be flexible and make it work, which is so important. <laughs> you know, it's funny. this is going to sound funny, but I, a lot of times when like when we're thinking or we're talking, you know, I, I, a lot of times I, I get a lot of my inspiration from Steve Jobs. Um, which is everybody knows who is the CEO of, of, of CEO of Apple. But one of his biggest things he always talks about is realistically as an entrepreneur is your, your biggest thing is just solving your client's problems. Right. So even him, you know, he looked, he looked at any, any type of product he ever came out with, it, it was solving a problem that was out there. And he always wanted to be the first one to do that. So whether it be, be the first person he's annoyed with, he's annoyed with the old MP3 players and he wants to make an iPod and figure out how to fit music in your pocket. He did that. So it's the same thing with us. It's like if there's a problem out there that the, pro the clients are having, we're going to figure out a way that we can make it make it simpler. And that's the key thing for us. You know, it's, it, it was a kiss, I believe, is, is the terminology. We yes. literally try to, we literally it's try to, simple. yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so that's what we do. And that's what we've been pioneering for the past nine years. Where a lot of times we're first for certain things. People might be like, that's crazy. Next thing you know, everybody's doing it. 
So, but that's 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 what we, that's what we've been known for, and we we continue to do that. So, yeah, a lot of the things that we have on in our program is realistically like us just trying to fix other people's problems before it becomes an excuse. Yeah, which is awesome. <laughs> okay, so I definitely want to talk more about making fitness work when you have kids around and the types of workouts you do. But I I have to get into this um, because we're all human, and we talked about this a lot last time. Um, confessions because <laughs> like this works for real life we're not superhumans. like okay i grew up during the era where pop tart was a perfectly healthy breakfast to eat like, like, my, my palate training was horrendous <laughs> i remember being in high school and being like okay i'm gonna be healthy so i'm gonna have frozen yogurt because that's yogurt so <laughs> that's gonna be my lunch and then i'll go out after school and we're all going to like a fast food joint so i'll get the crispy chicken because red meat is bad for you and i'm going to the vending machine i'm gonna get skittles because they're they're zero grams of fat <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but but 800 grams of sugar <laughs> right <laughs> No, okay, no one cared about. Sh- Come on, we had the pyramid with the cards on the bottom. Remember that one? <laughs> like, wow. Like, so th- 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 that's where I started off. Okay, like no hippie parents who fed me organic food. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cholesterol was bad, so we had like you know white pasta with sauce on it, and like I didn't like vegetables, so I just had white pasta with sauce on it. And that was considered. <laughs> and then you have three plates because that doesn't fill you up. And then for, I wanted to be healthy for so for dessert I'd have cinnamon toast crunch because that was cereal. <laughs> yeah, no, I I'd have like three bowls because I still wasn't full. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, I mean, like, like we're we're real people. So come on, com- confessions. What are like the real people? Like, where do you splurge? What do you cheat on? What do you like? Um, what are the things that you're we're supposed to like as fitness trainers that people would assume we like that we maybe don't like so much? <laughs> um, for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for, for me, I, I, he loves I, McDonald's. I love McDonald's. Story. So That's yeah, I, 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 I eat, McDonald's is my thing. So um, I typically have at least once a week. Um, so I usually have it with my daughter. My daughter's really big on it too. So typically every Friday. Yes, we have our, kids every, yeah, our kids eat McDonald's. Yeah, our kids eat McDonald's. Every Friday we typically do that. Um, I'm, I'm extremely in love with French fries. So um, if I go to a restaurant, I'm typically ordering French fries. And the fact that I have kids sometimes is like, you can't get away from it. Whatever meal they're having as a kid's meal, it usually comes with fries. So I have fries. Um, some people, uh, you know, one thing that people don't uh, know about me unless you follow me on Instagram is I actually drink alcohol every single day. So um, as a fitness, you, you hear, you know, like, I always hear people say, oh, my, my last trainer told me I couldn't drink. I was like, well, I'm not that trainer. So it's ultimately like, uh, and, and, when I, and I want to tell people is when I say I drink alcohol every day, I'm not drinking like old fashions and Long Island iced tea. light beer. Yeah, I'll drink like, like a, a hundred calorie uh, Corona light or um, or a Truly, which is a hundred calories. But what I like, it's kind of like going back to what I was saying before. It's still the small wins for me. So it's just drinking one of those is just is a satisfying. Like oh my gosh, I got to drink a you know a drink of beer and it's just it's just the taste and so on and so forth. Um, then so it this it curbs me from ever having to go to a situation where I feel like I have to go completely overboard because I haven't drunk a beer in eight years or some type of it's a crazy number. Well, a lot of people have is where well, I stopped drinking beer for two months and then when they finally have it, it's like ooh and they're right back into it. I never have those moments because it's I just, it's it's a it's a small portion every single day type of thing and it's nothing crazy. But and for me, I'm a little bit more closer to my goal than anything. But um, so I, I'm, I'm, I, I do sip um, a, a, a light, a light alcohol beverage. I love French fries. Um, I like actually fried food in general. And um, yeah, just and believe it or not, people don't know this about me, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm the processed king. So yes, he loves yeah, I'll things. eat processed foods like all day long. I'm, you know, I'll have a lean cuisine. I'll have um the healthy choice whatever whatever i, I i'm not going to make an excuse where it's like okay i can't eat something let's because th- to me in my mind especially now it's like those are controlled controlled calories you know exactly how much is in there and so on and so forth and some of them honestly they, they you know they 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 tell you that is you know no preserve is no, no 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 fake meat so to speak so i try to grab those and i i, I take those i'd rather have that than eat something that i shouldn't eat right um because it was because it was grass-fed um, for me, it's more of a situation. I'm more of like, okay, I rather I rather be right in the proper calorie range, or where I know I can maintain my weight or or, or lose weight. Um, um, and, and that's just me. And maybe that's a little bit too because I don't know how to cook. 
but um, but for me, that's 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 some of the secrets that people don't really really know about me. And when they hear about, well, wait, you eat that? I'm like, yeah, I eat that absolutely. But yeah, so and, and I I don't like stuff like uh, the other day I had a what was the salad I had the other day? What was it uh, quinoa? Yeah, I had a quinoa salad the other day. It was actually pretty decent. I know we don't eat that. Like people yeah, when like, I think in my home, yeah, he's like, I don't want that. I don't, I don't eat none of that stuff. Like <laughs> I, I eat white rice. Like that's my thing. Um, I, used, I, was, I used to eat brown rice for a while. And then I, when I did the research and I realized the fiber wasn't that much of a difference, I was like, well, what's the point? So I went right back to white rice. Um, so it wasn't much of a major difference to me. And, um, and in those days, you, I'm constantly checking my weight, checking everything, making sure. So it was like, there was no difference. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to continue doing that. And I enjoyed it more. And as well, long as it wasn't affecting my results, I, was, I, I thought it was working. But, you know, I guess sometimes for me is I go a little bit against the grain when it comes to uh, fitness and nutrition. And that started from a long time ago. From me, just after getting certified, you start doing everything the textbook says. And you realize it's either too hard and this doesn't make sense. And people, not, people can't resonate with it. And you're just like, Throw it out the window. Let's figure out what really works and, and, and keep going. But Tanisha, on the other hand, Tanisha is Miss Whole Foods. Um, Tanisha is, we're like the total opposite, actually. <laughs> yeah, Tanisha cooks everything she pretty much eats, mm-hmm. except um, except uh, maybe like um, she's, I'm she a likes sweets. sweets. Person, though. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely so. a sweets person. I, I like fries too, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I if I had a choice between fries or a chocolate chip cookie i'm going with a chocolate chip cookie um or, or fries or, or frosted flakes right or exactly i'm going with the frosted yeah. flakes i like cereal yeah, like that's cereal. one like for me like that's i don't know maybe from like you said growing up with pop tarts and like frosted flakes like those were the things you know that was like a healthy breakfast and frosted flakes but now like it's like a, a comfort thing for me sometimes at night i literally am like i just want a bowl of cereal <laughs> like, yeah. but it's, uh, we always have cereal <laughs> yeah buddy, buddy headphones but headphones are taken in your room, please, okay? And I'm in a meeting. Eric, what did I say? All right, getting his headphones. <laughs> Real life. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm Whole Foods. I'm like all into like cooking from scratch and everything. Um, for me, I, I feel the difference. My appetite decreases when I have the processed food. My appetite increases. Um, yeah, and so for me, it's really helpful. Um, and I, I can't like eat that much. Like my metabolism just is naturally like my whole life. I've just done better eating less. And so um, I like in order to get the micronutrients I need, I just need to have like mostly whole foods because if I have stuff, I'll just end up low on something. Um, yeah. To your point, when I, just like I was telling him, it, the issue with eating, for me, with eating processed foods, like if I eat uh, whatever, let's say I decide I'm going to have a protein bar for my snack, I'm literally hungry like five minutes after that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it just doesn't, it's not sat- satiating, I guess I should say. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas, sati- like, you yeah. know, I just feel like if I eat a whole food meal, I'm satisfied for that time period and I can move on with my life. I'm not just constantly craving more of it. Like when I eat a bowl of cereal, I cannot just eat one bowl of yeah, cereal. Yeah, but that's because you have the more money. You can't buy anything else after buying from Whole Foods. That has nothing to do with it. That's, <laughs> well, that's, that's because you're broke. <laughs> that's nothing. But, but somebody like me who have saved a little bit of money, I'm able to grab another meal. I oh, can do so. Shut the heck up. But for those, <laughs> but after, after, after eating from Whole Foods, yes, you, you, yeah, you will be, you will be, you, you'll be light on money too. So. <laughs> it's just that we're cooking whole food. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not talking about the store Whole Foods. We meant the, an actual Whole Food that hasn't been processed. Like, yeah, clarify that has, for people. We brought the same page, though. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Bars, though, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I like a Quest bar, but I'm just saying I noticed the difference versus a Quest bar and an actual meal. Yeah, totally. No, I'm with you. I'm like anything that has, you know, the added sugar or whatever, like to me that – that like activates a craving. Like I'm totally a sweet sat. It'll just activate it. So even if I have like a nice bar, but it has that, you know, the sweetener in it, forget it. Then I'm just going to start craving sugar a few minutes later. So for I'm with you. That's how my body works, but it depends what you're going to do to stick with it. Right. So like for someone else who can, you know, eat more along the, like the lines that, you know, Dwayne, like what you're eating, if that's what you need to do to stick with it, as opposed to like, getting like losing motivation 
eating a whole bunch of crap and then being too sluggish to work out, well, like, do it works. You know, it's behavioral. We're yeah. humans. We're humans. Right. Yeah. Yeah, We're living life. We're right. living you life. Adaptable. You totally. Want to you well, that's do you have any other confessions? I'll I'll share mine too, of course. But I'm asking. <laughs> Me? Yeah. Um, I said the cereal thing, right? I love yeah. cereal, and I will indulge in some cereal at nighttime, right before bed, because sometimes it just calls me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she's, a, she's a grown adult. She eats animal cookies. I love animal, <laughs> I animal cookies for my kids, and I tell him, "Don't buy them because my kids don't eat them. I'm the one that eats the animal cookies." <laughs> But, uh, but yes, I do love animal cookies. I love graham crackers. Those are my thing. Um, what else? We go out a lot. Like, so yeah. a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't, a lot of people think that because we're, we're health nuts that we don't go out to eat. Like, yeah, we eat like, yeah. you know, we love brunch. We love brunch every Sunday, like, especially before the, um, the Rona. We were literally like out every yeah, single every Sunday. Sunday we have that brunch. was like, if anybody knows us and my follows on Instagram, they know to tune in on Sunday because they're going to go to brunch or where are they going? Um, so it was always, we just turned that into a, a fun thing. And then we were big on happy hour. So we yeah. were, we always were enjoying life and, 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 and things like that. But, you know, the next morning you were catching us in the, you were catching us at the gym, um, working out and so on and so forth. So it was always that, it was always that yin and yang, that, that even balance. But and a lot I of people don't think what, that. Right? A lot of people, when they, when they start following me, they're like, did you really eat that Big Mac? Right. And like, yeah. Like we were literally like, so a lot, I think it was a couple, a couple of weeks ago, I actually had, a, I, I, I actually did a quick um, story about me watch eating the actual Big Mac because people don't think I really do it. I guess by and then I guess it's for the gram, but um, but yeah, we 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 live a regular life completely, one hundred and thirty percent, and we do that because we also want to let people like our clients know that you can maintain a lower body fat percentage and have fun eating, right? You don't have to. You don't. A lot of times people think that you know, you know, Tanisha competes um, as far as like um, bikini competitions. Um, there's a time and place where she eats like that. And there's a time and place where she eats like she's going on a cruise. And um, so it, we, we, we try to show people that just that even balance um, and just having fun. And I think sometimes I think helps people resonate and makes people allow people to say, okay, let me try that. Cause they're having fun anyways. It's not like I got to eat, you know, carrot, carrot sticks and, 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 and <laughs> celery sticks all day long and with, with, with dry salad. So um, I mean, even when people join our meal plans and they find out that they got to have salad dresses, they're like, Oh my gosh! I was gonna thought I was gonna have to eat. I was gonna have to have lemon juice. So it's like no, it's like no, it's not like that. We have a, we have approved salad dressings that we, we we give to you. Pick any one of these salad dressings, enjoy. We even tell you which one of the top best ones to have and which ones taste the best. So just we take out all the guesswork. Uh, we tried it all for you guys. We gained the weights for, for you, so you don't have to. Um, <laughs> So, 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 but, but yeah, that's like one of the biggest things. I think that people like the, how, how fun we are as far as, as life is concerned. Now, what's up with you? Like, what's your, what's your thing? Like, what, like, what, 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 are you, are, are you a pizza person? Are you Chinese? Like, <laughs> like, like, like where, where, are you, where are you at? Like, what's, matter of fact, what is your favorite restaurant right now? Your like, favorite, favorite, favorite restaurant, restaurant. Favorite restaurant that's around the country that people can like say, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Is it like Cheesecake Factory? Is it, is it, is <laughs> it, is it, is it I don't go to those very often. So, like in Rockaway, we, I mean, we have like a, like a McDonald's or whatever, but I'm not really into that. We don't have so much of that. Um, I'm, I'm a pasta person. Like, I love Italian. Um, so, like, that's what you'll like. Uh, if I'm cooking a cheap meal, it's probably pasta. If I'm going out for a cheap meal, it's probably an Italian restaurant. Um, the one that people know, so. Um, if I'm on a road trip, it's like a tradition. I will will stop at a Pizza Hut at some point on that road trip. Just you know, anytime I'm on a road trip, so a few times a year, I need to stop at my Pizza Hut, get that stuffed crust pizza, get some of those pasta things and the cinnamon sticks or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's that's when people will know about. But mostly, um, I mean, I just love cooking. I feel like. I think I'm like, I have the heart of an Italian grandmother already. Like I'm just, my entire life is like a grandma in training. Like, you know, I have the house, people come, you know, they just kind of show up, stay for a few days. We're on the beach. So they're like, yeah, you know, who comes for one day? Like, <laughs> you know, it's like grandma's house. I cook and I'll bake them cookies. I'm a sweets person too. Um, I feel better cooking it, you know, like baking it myself because at least I know the ingredients are pure. There was not that you know, added crap in it and stuff. Um, but still, you know, it's oh, like added crap, it's added preservatives. <laughs> added okay, preservatives. Fair okay. <laughs> yes. You don't, want to, um, you don't want to confuse the audience. 
that's true that's true <laughs> but yeah you know so like I'll, I'll make it from scratch so it's like okay there's there's more than I should be having in a sitting but at least I know it's not anything that I feel is harmful to my body um, but I'm like I mean I love my sweets um, if I'm gonna buy a cheap dessert it's gonna be ice cream um, actually someone came to visit and brought like three pints of Ben and Jerry's and I'm just like they're sitting there and my son is bugging me to have a cheat evening I tried telling him we could have um because he called it he we would ask for junk food and so I'd be like okay we're gonna Saturday Saturday and then he's like so Saturday's junk food day I'm like okay Saturday's junk food day so then we'd wake up and be like no mommy I'm not having that for breakfast it's junk food day get the candy <laughs> I'm just like crap what I get myself into so then he'd be like waffles for breakfast candy old and I was just like this isn't working. This isn't exactly like, this is like the kind of cheat we can do like four times a year. So now we do cheat evening. So last week, I mean, like I said, I love Italian. So we ordered from a pizzeria, pasta, pizza. So good. I mean, New York pizza, come on people, right. you know? <laughs> um, and their Italian pizza, delicious. Ordered that. And um, the person who I, I was, who was supposed to come over for it, ended up having to cancel last minute and had a whole bunch of leftovers. So I feel like the typical thing people do is have it the next day, but you know, we know better what I do. It's sitting there in that freezer for the next cheat day, which cheat evening, which I think Eric is going to end up making it today. And <laughs> so then we'll dig into that, you know, the cow zone, the leftover pasta and whatever's left of that Ben and Jeffries, you know, we'll dig into that together, but that's it. It's, it's a meal and a dessert. Like you said, it's not the entire day. Um, that was, I had to get that out of him, cheat day. Maybe when we go on vacation, we can have one cheat day a couple times a year. But his his whole idea of it was just like way beyond anything I could imagine. Like, he had it all planned out. He's like, more breakfast is this, lunch. Yeah, he remembered where his Easter candy was stored. <laughs> Now that he's older, when he was younger, they could, he would eat it. He loved unwrapping it, right? So he'd unwrap all of them, and then they'd be sitting out there, and I would just take them, scoop them, put them in the garbage, and the ones that weren't unwrapped, I'd put them in a high closet somewhere, maybe take them out the next holiday when we had people over. But they'd be like, oh my, the, the junk food, that's up there. And I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing about it, too, is, though, that we have those, like, we have cheat weeks, and... We have them when, on yeah, when we go on vacation, like especially when we go on a cruise, it's like no hold, no holds barred. Like we, like we get. Oh, no, I don't. I mean, we do, but we still are mindful throughout. Like we we're not just eating okay. crap for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. But so we do order egg whites. Egg whites. With, with, we still, but she, we with, with, it out. with the cinnamon danishes that she's eating. So I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's seven days no holes barred. Right? I disagree. Okay, so but seven we work days. out regularly. Yeah. We work we out do regularly. Not miss our workouts. Yeah. And I feel like we still we don't we're not I mean we're, we're not like just eating just to eat. Not just like eating. We're, we have the ultimate drink package. We definitely drink. Yeah, we get yeah, our so, drink on. Yeah. So it's okay. like we're, so we're having fun the whole seven days. But then we get right back and it's right back on. But it's right back on right. It's right back on that horse. And I think that's one of the biggest things is like like folks have to you there's those times are gonna happen. They're gonna happen. <laughs> the times are gonna happen. You just completely go all out, and just and then, but you just gotta go right back on, and then get right back on. And it's like, like nothing ever happened. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So that's so we so we 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 truly are. You know, we're, we're big on cruises, and right now we're once upon we're, a yeah, time. Once upon, well, once upon a time. Okay, okay go ahead, bud. <laughs> He's really excited to open the package that arrived before yeah. we started this. So oh, okay. He can go open the toilet paper if he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm, I, I feel you. Like, there are times, um, so for me, I fall off the wagon completely about three days a month. And to Nisha, I think you can guess what those three days might um, coincide with. And I've just come to accept it. Like, you know what? I know I'm going to feel like crap. I know my willpower is going to go out the door. And I just need to make sure that I don't throw off the entire rest of the month during that time and accept <laughs> that it's going to happen. Um, yeah. You know, that that's when I would be like, okay, there's leftover pizza. I'm having it three days in a row. Like, that's when, like, my prefrontal cortex just ceases to exist. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, on vacation, I got to say you guys are lucky because if I stray from the way I'm used to eating, I feel like crap. So I'll be like, there's all this delicious food, and I'm just like, I can't even eat it because I know I'm going to wake up feeling like crap and not want to do anything. Like, I can't. Like, my body's mm -hmm. super sensitive. But usually what I do if I'm going on vacation – 
back in that routine of eating processed. Once you get back in that routine of eating processed, that will never happen. You're, 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 <laughs> you, you are pre-configured for those days. The body's not like, it doesn't reject it. It's not foreign. It's like, oh, I, 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 I <laughs> You know what I think it is, Tanisha? I think that since he's never com fully converted to the Whole Foods way of eating, he doesn't realize just how good he can feel. He's just so right. used to feeling slightly crappy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a debate for a whole other day. <laughs> but I mean, There's a podcast next week. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it's great. I think it's great for people to hear this. Like, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. And we're all human and can't do everything 100%. And we'll choose different things to be 100% on. And you can still, like, the human body is so resilient. You literally have to batter it for a few decades before you start getting most health problems. You know, like... It's like, that's why people are like, oh, well, my kids can do it. And like, no, that they can't really. It's just because their kids doesn't mean like what you eat becomes your cells, right? Like, so just because their kids doesn't mean it's just that it, since it takes like three decades for things like diabetes to start setting in, you don't notice usually, not always. Increasingly, we're having kids with a lot of these issues. But for most of the, th the age related diseases, like the top killers in our society, they don't kick in until you're about 30 because you've been abusing your body for 30 years. <laughs> so the human body is super resilient. Yep. And like, I'm not afraid to eat anything. You put McDonald's in front of me, I'll eat McDonald's. I go to someone's house and they're serving whatever, you know, like I'm going to eat it. Like I'm grateful that they took the time and the, put in the love to make me this food. Um, you know, but, and I know my body's going to flush it out because I take care of myself. But so I think like, that's the point, like everyone, we're all going to choose our things. Like, yes, I have ice cream sometimes. No, I don't like broccoli. I eat it occasionally because my son loves it. It's the only vegetable he likes. But if you were to ask me, I would never eat broccoli again in my life. You know, like, and you know, I'm not a big salad person. Like if I'm going to have a salad, usually it's like, let's say I made like rice and beans or stew. I'll put that over greens yeah. and have that like hearty feel to it. Like an actual, like entirely cold salad with like dressing, not my thing. Um, I'll have raw vegetables in a different way, but like, that's it. Like we're all different and we're all going to, you know, gravitate more towards certain things, less towards other things, have our things that will never gravitate towards ever. And we can still all be healthy and it can still work and we can lo live long, strong lives. And I think like, that's one of the reasons I loved, and I really wanted to have you guys on the podcast because we work with such, you know, a very similar population and yet we have you know approaches that are different and they still work and i think it's just so important for people to to hear that you know yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. all right cool so last thing <laughs> um yeah i think i gave all of my confessions pretty much the big ones um yes i might be eating the leftover calzone and pasta and ice cream tonight um we'll see i I just saw Eric open the freezer. I'm like, is he getting it out already? <laughs> the refrigerator. Huh? Oh, the refrigerator, not the freezer. Okay, um, he's very precise. I want to have a junk food up in now. Did you guys hear that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but maybe we'll have a junk food evening. Huh. We'll see, okay? I we'll see. Junk food up Let me finish you. my meeting, and then we'll talk about it, okay? I <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think he's just decided for me. I don't think there's any way I'm getting out of this now. But our last one was last week. I feel like once a week, have that cheap meal and dessert, and we're good. And I'm getting him in that habit, too. He knows the difference. He knows what the junk food is and what the healthy food stuff is, you know, and he's five. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, totally. Um, so the last thing, how we actually work out with kids. So we talked a little bit about how we make that work, but what's your regimen like? Do you do the same as your clients where it's about three times a week, 24 minutes? Are you getting it in every day? Are you interrupted? Do you split it up throughout the day? Spill it. <laughs> so um, I work out, we both probably work out about six to seven days a week. We work out every day, um, just about, even if it's just, most days I, I probably lift. Um, I lift six days a week. I have one rest day and then I usually do cardio, do some form of cardio or active rest day on my seventh, on my seventh day. Um, my kids though, they're at this age, they know, you know, pretty much, okay, mommy's going to the garage, she's working out, but 
they will still come out there. My daughter usually comes out and says she wants to ride her bike or they'll come out and be like, um, mom, I need this. Or can I work out with you? Or, you know, so occasionally, yes, they will come into up. It's not a hard interruption, but I usually don't have to stop, but they will come out just to be around me or just, you know, like that. So, um, so yeah, so no, I don't do the exact same workouts as my clients, um, but theirs are a little shorter and condensed because I'm, you know, I do a full work, especially now I'm getting back into prepping for, for the season for show. So they're more intense, you know, but, uh, so yeah, he works out yeah. every day too. Yeah. So I mainly work out first thing in the morning yeah, so too. They so they're sleeping. They're always sleeping. So that's the best time for me to get in and get it out. Mm-hmm. And then, um, uh, I guess there's times, honestly, that I'll, I'll work out in the morning. I'll say, Oh, you know, I'll, I like to try to do my, I, I do my, my bodybuilding type of uh, workout, um, first, and then I do my cardio afterwards. So usually it's anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour ish of, of lifting. And then I'll do like you know, 30 minutes of, of cardio. So, and I usually do it fasted, which is another thing that's completely on textbook, but anyways, but, uh, so I'll do that and I'll try to get it all done. If I don't have enough time to get the cardio in, I'll try to do it in the evening. So, and this is where I get to like, really get to be in my client's shoes that I went through a whole entire day of work and so on and so forth. And by the time you get home, it's like, unless I take a pre-workout, like, like that, 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 that dose of, of caffeine is like, I don't want to do it. So I, I, I completely relate to them. So when folks ask me, like, what's the best time to work out? Um, ultimately, I always try to say, if you can get up in the morning and work for your schedule, try to get try to get it done in the morning so you can get it in and get it out. And I think what another thing, what it does too, it's like a mind hack, I think, mm-hmm. where ultimately it's it starts your day off from a standpoint of, I just knocked out a, a, a decent or an amazing 24-minute workout. I don't want to ruin that when I get to work when they have Krispy Kreme donuts mm-hmm. at the, in the break room. You know, it, it's the total reverse what I see with our clients where if they don't work out in the morning, they'll get to work, the Krispy Kreme donuts are there, and they'll eat one thinking that, well, I'll just I'll go home and I'll burn it off, it off right? Oh. <laughs> so it's just, it's, so it, 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 it's amazing how the difference you can see where clients who work out in the morning versus the evening, like who gets the more, and we track all this because mm-hmm. our, 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 our app tells us, so we know the, the peaks and when people are working out and the lows when people are working out, and you can see where it's like, okay, the, who are getting the, the better results or more results as opposed to the people who aren't. And it's usually the people who are actually working out first thing in the morning. Yeah. And so. because they get up and get it over with. Yeah. Like a lot of the moms in our program, for example, what, you know, like we said, another thing they struggle with is time. So one of my first suggestions to them is always, can you get up? Can you get, get up 20 minutes earlier in the morning and get it done before your kids get up? Because that's the number one excuse. I don't have time. My kids, you know, this, they're going to interrupt me. Da-da. Can you do it before your kids get up? So most of them transition to that if they can't. Then I say, okay, what, what does your day look like? And then we try to figure out another way. But yes, like you said, most of our clients see the best results when they just get up and get it done. Yeah, I'm so with you on that. Um, so I don't necessarily, so um, with my program, it's more um, like bursts that you kind of sprinkle yeah. throughout your day and week as you can. And it kind of adds up to a full traditional <laughs> regimen. Um, but that's just, you know, the clients I'm working with, that's what we need. Um, mm-hmm. But one of the staples of my program is a morning warm up. And I'm like, you know, it's two minutes, one minute, whatever it is, but like get your heart pumping in the morning. And I think like you said, it's the mind hack first, you know, first, but also the boost of energy um, that minute, just a cut, like all it takes is a minute of cardio in the morning can help to reset your circadian rhythm. And it's like high leverage. It's like, wait, you do this thing at this time. And I don't care. So even if you're interrupted, like a lot of the moms I work with, they're, they're not waking up to an alarm when it's planned. They're waking up to a baby crying or cluster feeding or whatever it is. Okay, fine. Two minutes jumping jacks. That's it. And I'm like, and then if you want to sprinkle it throughout your day or do this first here, this first there throughout the day, like, like I personally um, love working out in the afternoon. Um, and when my, even before quarantine, I'd rather get in the rest of my workout in the evening. <laughs> so um yeah you know even if they're doing it like i'll do it at a different time of day um before him i would wake up and do a run in the morning and then after work come back and lift the run in the morning can't work because um you know for like another five six years that would be irresponsible <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm totally with you, though. Like, morning, you know, the full workout, yes, if you can do it, awesome. But even if you choose to work out at a different time, like, morning workouts are super powerful. Yeah. Super powerful. My car. I think Eric's uh, 
I think Eric's telling me that. <laughs> he's, ready, he's ready to eat. Look at this. <laughs> this is, this is, what, this is um, how to run a business and be healthy and fit under these conditions. If your program, if your current coach doesn't make it work under those conditions, uh-oh, did I lose? No, you doesn't make it work under those conditions, then uh, it's not. <laughs> Exactly. So, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Well, anyway, last thing tell everyone how they can get in touch with you, how they can join your amazing program, and how they can find out more about you. Yeah, uh, right now we just launched a 60 day Luigi 70 challenge. So if you um, go to uh, Wait, the audio suddenly got crazy. I'm not sure what happened. How's that? Yeah, you hear me good. You hear me good. So that's that's it. On my end, I'm not sure what happened. We'll go with it and hope that the recording doesn't get it. <laughs> I'm going to finish because I got to run to the point of so. Okay, go for it. Great chatting with you. Busy mom, you know how that goes. Oh, yeah, so, totally. Um, so, yeah, so... Um, right now we just launched a 60 day challenge. So 60 day lose your stomach challenge. Um, so if I'm not going to go to virtually fit, then that's virtually fit um, two teams dot com. Or look at my website, I'm the fourth, um, the number four fitness dot com. And then um, you can go ahead and we can actually do a quick 10 minute um, uh, strategy session with us. So we'll actually go ahead and start building on the plan for that on the phone. And then from, from there, so um, yeah, definitely want to that. Um, if you can follow me on Instagram, it's just um, I'm at Google for Fitness, um, aka so King of Carbs. So you definitely got very loud. Spread, uh, cheers and, 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 and good vibes when it comes to weight loss. and just a thing that you should be doing. Uh, like the clutter, the, 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 the cluttered field of weight loss. So. That, yeah, so so that's it. And it's mentioned that I'm I'm um, expert on that on Instagram. Yeah, she does some fun lives. <laughs> Try to. Uh, totally awesome. Well, it was so great having you on. We'll definitely have to keep in touch, chat a lot more. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for having us on. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for being on. We'll talk soon. All right, talk to you. Right. And thank you all of you who are listening for tuning in to Badass Moms brought to you by the Holistic Therapies Directory. If you want a holistic therapist or if you are a holistic therapist or anything within the realm of holistic fitness, health, make sure you check out holistictherapiesdirectory.com to find a practitioner or to create your profile and spread the good work that you're doing. Thanks again. Have a great weekend, everybody. 